if you are a, an artist, you probably know that that is the, the definition of a line. So if you think about it, that's you put a dot down and then that dot starts moving and that's a line. So that's why I've entitled all of these paths of moving points because there's a lot of lines up here as you can see. Uh, but uh, anyway, so the first question that I get asked most often is, do you use a ruler? And uh, I, no, I, I don't. Actually, if you look carefully, I, I do draw a pencil grid using a, uh, a parallel rule, which is a mechanical draftsman's tool. I just draw a one inch grid, and then I start in with, with a layer of lines. And they're all, so everything's drawn uh, freehanded. Uh, it's, it's a layering process. Uh, I put down a layer of color, assess what I have, and then uh, uh, move to the next layer. So there's multiple layers uh, of lines to build up uh, the textures and so forth. So that's, that's more or less the way uh, that they work. So if for hours on end, every day, I'm in my studio, I'm drawing lines. It's lines and lines. It's kind of funny, uh, my friend Laura Larson's out here, she can attest to this. In the morning, I get up and I go to the YMCA on Foster and I do lap swimming. So in the morning, I'm just swimming in lines, back and forth, back and forth. So I go home, wash the chlorine off and go out to the studio and just start drawing lines, back and forth, back and forth. So, so um, it's, 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 it's a rather tedious process. Um, uh, it's, it's very meditative, it's very, I like to refer to it as, as redneck zen or <laughs> Mississippi zen because I'm a, a Mississippi boy. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit how I developed this uh, uh, redneck zen early on as a, as a, as a boy. So, so we all have those kind of influences, but um, so these drawings are, you might think it's rather boring, but like I said, it's really rather meditative. Uh, but they're, they're kind of like you hear people talk about flying an airplane, uh, an airliner. It's 99% boredom and 1% sheer terror. And that's the way these drawings, they, they, they go. I, you know, I get, I'm just, and then all of a sudden, oh, shh. I got to make a decision here, <laughs> and uh, and a lot of, and it does happen. If we were to unframe some of these pieces in here, you would probably see drawings that didn't make it. So I can get three weeks into a drawing and lose it. But I just go get another piece of paper. You know, so it's all about the process. Uh, but uh, uh, I've had accidents. I remember one time, I'm not quite sure how I did it, I remember being three weeks into a drawing and a drop of blood. Oh. <laughs> Oof, throw that one away. So. Uh, the other frequently asked question is, do you do weaving? Or, or have you ever thought about doing weaving? And because the, the comment that most people will make is that they look like fabric. They look like uh, some type of uh, textile product, but uh, and I, I've, I've heard that comment so much that I've really embraced the idea that indeed they do uh, have a kind of uh, uh, textile-like quality to them. Uh, as these are fairly recent drawings uh, within the year or so, and the change that has come about in them is is a result of uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, referred to some of my, in fact, that's him right over there, referred to my, some of my earlier works as placemats. And so, uh, uh, so I, I began to kind of think about how could I make them less placemat line. And uh, so I decided, well, if that's his opinion, I'm going to look at his work, and because his work has a lot of atmosphere in it. So I actually, this is the only piece in the show that is, uh, uh, has a full title, uh, and it's a it's because this is an homage to my friend Gator Pope over here, and so I just ripped off all of his things, and I learned a lot about making making these drawings a lot more atmospheric in the process. So, so that's the way they they kind of evolved and changed. Uh, uh, so the, another question is, how do you do this 
for hours on end every day of the week. And uh, so how do you do this? Well, one thing is, is audio books help a lot. Let me, and, and, and I thank Gaither again for turning me on to audio books. Uh, I can sit there and actually listen to the pen scratching across the paper, and that's fine. That kind of, I'm down with that, but it's also, uh, I listen to a, a lot of books, so if you've got any questions about good books to listen to, I'm your man. <laughs> a lot of people ask what kind of tools I use, and uh, that's kind of a scary thing about what I use is because they don't make these tools anymore. And I'm going to pass this around, but I use what's called a, a technical pen. Now, old codgers like Jim Burke would know what that is, but... Uh, the, uh, and Gaither Pope was a draftsman, he would know what this is, but these are, these are pens that, uh, uh, they, they come in different widths, like this one is a big fat guy, and uh, you load up the back, this cartridge comes off and you load it up with, with colored ink and so forth. Uh, I'll pass this around in case you've never seen it. I talked at LSU to a drawing class, few months ago nobody had a clue what these things were but uh, so this is just like but that's a that's one brand there it's a they were made by a German company called Koenor and uh, they this is a fine point in here but they were called repeatographs and that's kind of what everybody called them Bob, did, did you buy the cartridges in certain colors, or, or do you no. pick up your colors? No, you, you, as you'll see when it comes to you, pop that cartridge off the back. So, so you're, you're making your colors? You're I, buy, colors? I buy colored inks, oh, okay. Excuse like this. Uh, they have little eyedroppers, oh, so, so I fill, fill the cartridge the up. So, Lynn, yes? About how long does one, the size, take you? Um, well, I'm, again, I'm working every day, and I work every afternoon, so I can usually bang one of these out in two to four weeks. So the uh, horizontal ones, I, 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 oh, I like to thank my neighbor, Eileen Boje, who commissioned me to do a piece for her house, and she said, I want a certain song. And so, the worst kind of person. <laughs> well, no, it's better than saying, I want the yellow, it's got to match the song. <laughs> I don't do that. So, but no, she just gave me a format, and it was really a very uh, interesting thing to change my, from the square. So. The reason I started doing these drawings is I was trained in a very traditional representational sense. You know, still lives, landscapes figurative work. Uh, but at one point prior to doing these, I was doing some illustrations of, what did you call them, terrible toys? They were toys that, <laughs> toys gone bad. Uh, and so I began to do a lot of writing with stories, and so I, I was illustrating my own stories. And so I'll just pass that around. This is a, that's actually a, a weapon that was a killed one of the characters that I created. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a long story and I'm not going to get into it, but if you're interested, I'll share the series with you. But uh, nevertheless, I, I, I finally mercifully had writer's block. So <laughs> literature was spared any more of my stories. And I was, towards the end, I was in my, I would start my class with their work and, and then I would sit down in the corner and I would draw. And so one day I was doing these rather intricate little drawings and one of my students walked over and looked to see how, what I was doing. And my friend David Horton walked into the room also. He talked with me at Nickel State, David Pope. Uh, and the student said, uh, Mr. Horton, Rob's kind of crazy, isn't he? And uh, David said, uh, Rob just likes to make marks on a page. And it didn't hit me at the moment, but when I finally had my permanent writer's block, I was really, I was really <laughs> kind of worried there. And then I remembered David's words of, he just likes to make marks on a page. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest, as they say, is just. <laughs> Can we owe this to Dave? 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I'm interested in your uh, process of deciding color and laying in color. And well, thank you for asking that. I should have, should have addressed that. Uh, actually, these all start out very garish. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I put down, as I said, I put down a layer of lines, or it may be dashes. Sometimes it may be squiggles. It's just some kind of mark making thing. Once I get that down, pretty much what I do is I try to neutralize the colors by everything you were taught in beginning design. I use a lot of complementary colors. I use split complements, complementary colors, or neutral colors. Uh, but it's all in with the end goal of trying to neutralize what starts out as something very garish. That's interesting. So yeah. That would act, that's actually the reverse of what I was How expecting did you, see you to say. It? I would have anticipated you saying that you started with the neutral and then added the color in. Just the so, opposite. That's cool. Thanks. Okay. Well, I have a question about in the, the first painting, first drawing here. There's a circle, right? And it's then, an egg. egg. It's an egg. <laughs> so, it is an egg. So, did that egg just emerge, or did you have like a feeling? Like, how does that? Okay, I, that I told you I'm, I, I've already exposed myself as, as the village idiot, so I'm just going to tell you everything. This is this is a joke here. This is a big joke. Uh, my friend Gaither Pope over here has a show at Cole Pratt Gallery in New Orleans. If you get a chance, you should go see it. Uh, but Gaither's work is very atmospheric. And so uh, I helped him bring his work down to his recent show. And uh, I was just noticing, he uses a lot of, all artists do this, we have devices. We do, it's just your go-to thing. And so his go-to thing is he has low horizon lines or high horizon lines, mm -hmm. or tell me if I'm telling you. Okay, you're doing fine. He's, uh, he also uses little, little, what do you call them? I call them color bars. Color bars. So I stole the horizon line. I stole the color bar. He usually has birds in his images. Mm -hmm. So I just said, where did the birds come from? <laughs> <laughs> I put a big egg up there. <laughs> That's okay, because I stole everything that I used to. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, as we were saying earlier, good artists uh, borrow, great artists steal. So. so you had a vision of that? Um, no, I just sort of. ripped them all. I just... <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was no vision. I said, what does he do? Well, he's got a rising lines, he's got little dots, and he's got birds. So there you go. Boom, boom, boom. But it, but it did have an act. A goal toward making that egg instead of That's just doing idea. lines and just yeah, yeah. well, actually, I, I really once I got into it a little bit, I was really trying to make this thing, you know, really breathe mm -hmm. with light, mm -hmm. and that's just a little tiny. So. Mm -hmm.